Sarepta Therapeutics revealed new data for its Duchenne muscular dystrophy gene therapy that it showed improved motor function at 52 weeks. However, that stock plummeted yesterday as we learned the trial results fell short of expectations, raising doubts of approval for expansion of that gene therapy by the FDA. Joining us right now is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor who is also on the boards of both Illumina and Pfizer. And, and Scott, help us understand this a little bit. That stock uh, was down 44, 45, 46 percent as we were watching it yesterday. Um, the gene therapy's already been approved, but it did not meet the endpoints. What did you think when you heard that news? Well, the product earned accelerated approval in June for four- and five-year-olds uh, based on some preliminary data uh, showing that the gene therapy could improve production of the missing protein in Duchenne's mus muscular dystrophy, this uh, dystrophin protein. This was a trial done to confirm the clinical benefit. So it was a trial done on 125 boys to demonstrate that the drug at the gene therapy actually improves function in those children. It missed the primary endpoint, which is a complicated endpoint that measures the ability of children to function on a scale, a 17-point scale of things like the ability to step on and off a box or rise from a chair. But it did reach statistical significance on secondary endpoints, like the ability to walk 10 meters or the ability to rise off the floor. So the data was mixed. Um, there were some oddities about the trial. So, for example, the placebo arm showed significant improvement as well as the active arm. The active arm showed more improvement than the placebo arm, but you also saw improvement in the children who weren't dosed with the gene therapy, which normally you wouldn't expect to see. And I think part of the challenge here is that the test that's used to measure function and remember, you're measuring function in four- and five- and six-year-olds, so a lot of these are very young children um, who are hard to enroll and manage in clinical trials. But the test that's used to measure their function, this test called the North Start Ambulatory Test, which measures function across 17 different parameters, is very insensitive. It doesn't really uh, pick up small improvements. And if you're seeing small improvements in these boys over the course of a year, this trial was run out to a year, you might not be able to pick that up um, from a, a test like this. You might need to look over a longer period of time. So just in, you know, in summation, I think that there's speculation that the FDA may withdraw the accelerated approval. I doubt the agency would do that. The second question is whether or not the indication would have been expanded beyond just four- and five-year-olds, because the original approval was just for children ages four and five. Um, I think that's an open question right now, and that might be what investors are reacting to. Look, part of the, the issue with, with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is that boys with this disease die. This is a death sentence. You're not going to live past 33, I think, is the, on the outside on this. So the FDA has approved additional things, but people are looking at this for gene therapy overall and, and wondering what this means, um, not just the effectiveness, but also on safety levels. Um, what would you say the state of gene therapy is right now, just from where we were 20 years ago when things got shut down because there were deaths that came with some of these gene therapies? What happens now? Yeah, look, extremely promising. We've seen gene therapies that have made it to the market that are extremely successful. Just yesterday, Vertex Pharmaceuticals presented data on a gene therapy for sickle cell disease. There's others behind it right. that look like they could be substantial improvements in the treatment of that disease. There's other companies with gene therapies in development um, for Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, including Pfizer, the company I'm on the border, but other companies like Solid Biosciences. Uh, and the second and third generation products that are in earlier stages of development right now look like they can even be improvements over what's on the market now for this disease and many others. Um, look, there is some evidence here with this product that it is providing benefit to these boys. I think that the uh, the efficacy shown on those secondary endpoints, like the ability to walk 10 meters or rise from the floor, looked convincing. I think that what, what we're doing in these trials is not measuring good endpoints. We're not using sensitive tools to pick up small improvements over short periods of time. And in an age when we have things like wearable devices that can measure physical function on a daily basis and perhaps yeah. develop a much That's more a precise measure of how people are functioning, I think we ought to be looking at different kinds of clinical trial constructs. But in terms of just gene therapy overall, we've made substantial progress in a very short period of time. I think this is going to transform the practice of medicine. Scott, is it a Y-linked uh, marker or something? Is it a Y chromosome? Uh, for why boys? Link? Why it's yeah? Why, why it's, it's yeah? It's specific to boys. So so uh, common in, in boys. Is that a Y link genetic mutation? Chromosome. Yeah, it's, it's inherited just in boys. Okay. And so, you know the disease, the pathology of the disease. You're missing a protein that stabilizes the function of the muscle. 
so that you get repeated injuries to muscle through just normal activity, and that causes the right, degradation and why, function in those boy. boys. So let me ask you about, about Pfizer quickly. $30 stock, I mean, it, it has been in a slow, sickening uh, decline for the past 12 months. I'm not asking you to, uh, to comment on, on stock movement, but uh, the notion that, that we're going to have a, a COVID slash, um, what would you call it, almost an annuity every year and packs love it or whatever it is, uh, I mean, we got to rethink that. Uh, it's, uh, the stock market doesn't tell us everything, but it certainly uh, casts doubt that we're going to need a, uh, a booster from Pfizer. And then if you get the disease, some uh, a therapeutic, that, that doesn't look like it's happening at this point, Scott. Yeah, look, I think the, the CEO of Albert Borla was out uh, talking about this just yesterday with Jim Cramer. Um, I, the company put out earnings. It did reset expectations around what the go forward would be on the COVID sales. You know, I'm still of the opinion that this is a flu-like illness, and I think you could have an expectation that it's going to be a flu-like market. We'll see once we get to a steady state with this virus how it shakes out. Uh, I think that there's a risk that we're going to have a bimodal COVID season this year. We had, an, we had a strain earlier in the year. The vaccine wasn't available in time for that strain. You know, we may see a second wave of infection like we've seen in past years. In many cases, we see a bimodal flu season as well. So we'll see what the steady state looks like. But I do think that this is going to be a flu-like illness that we'll want to protect ourselves from in a similar right. fashion. It How that be, translates into expectations. Could be people with that's comorbidity. It may not hit the, the, the entire population. Older individuals. Be, right. right. And exactly. remember, we, we vaccinate young children for flu. We probably won't be vaccinating young children for COVID. Right.